Hi there and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I wanted to talk about error handling, but specifically one aspect of it that sort of takes your standard error handler up a notch. And that is how we can include line numbers and know exactly which line in a procedure caused the error or triggered the error. So what I have here is simply an Excel um, workbook and I've inserted a standard module right here, standard module. Actually, I inserted several because I'm going to show you the progression here of building an error handler. So I have just a subroutine, can be a function, doesn't make a difference what you're dealing with, a procedure. And we have a standard procedure that does things. Now, for a simple, small procedure, one or two lines, you know, it isn't the end of the world. The error handler doesn't give you the line number. But when you get into more extensive cases where you have, you know, 20, 40, 100 lines or more um, in your procedure, knowing which line triggered the problem can save you a lot, a lot of debugging. So in this case, I'm just going to use the debug print just to do an action. So clear my immediate window and we just run. Is it prints out the numbers one through eight. Beautiful. So now let's move on to the second example upon which we build where now we're going to create an error. We're going to trigger an error on purpose because we want to see what happens and build our error handler. So here after the sixth debug, we're going to now raise error 1054. Any arbitrary number doesn't make a difference. We're just wanting to cause a problem. So now if we run this, you'll see what happens. We're going to go one through six and we're going to get this pop-up error 1054. That's what I told it to trigger. Uh, the error message won't necessarily be accurate because I haven't included all this information. I just need to trigger something. Now, if you're the DB admin, you're doing development, sure, you can go debug and it brings you to the right place. That's glorious. But when you're talking about a production database, typically that option is all of this it won't even show up. Normally, you're going to have an error handler. Okay. And you're not wanting your users to ever have the capacity to debug into your code. Never. So, you know, you may use things like runtime. Um, and if you do end, well, you're not aware of anything else. So this is why error handlers are so important. So let's take it up a notch. Well, let's create an error handler. So this would be a typical error handler flow. So on error, go to error handler. So it jumps here. So as soon as the problem occurs, it's going to jump down to this line and then it's going to run through and it's going to in my case, use a message box to display to me, the user, what the, that there's a problem. And then once it's done that, it comes here, it goes resume error handler exit. So it's going to jump up here. And this is normally where you clear your object variables and things like that. You do your spring cleaning before gracefully exiting the procedure, in this case, a subroutine. So now let's take a look at this. Now this is better. At least the end user can't break into code and things like that. But, you know, a generic message like an error has occurred doesn't provide much information. So let's jump it up another notch. So we come here and now we're going to give a message box. And this time we're going to include things like the error number, the source, the description of the error. So you'll see we have the object, the error object that we have different properties that we can use. So I'm using the error number for error number. The source, you copy the name of your procedure and description we use the error object with the property description so we'll press run and now we're forgetting somewhere finally we now know the specific error we know the source of that error and we know a description of it sometimes the description is helpful sometimes it isn't so much but this still doesn't help me as a developer when i have you know a 200 line procedure to know where in this procedure do i have an issue so let's keep pushing things a little further well i'm going to let you in on a secret if you weren't already aware of it but we can use something called erl erl actually reports back the line number on which the error occurred so what i'm now doing here is i'm going to report the line number that the error occurred so let's let's run this I'll clear the immediate window again. Here we go. And wait a second. I thought you said it would report the line number. And as you can see, it's not. Why is that? Well, you have to manually come and insert line numbers. 
This is like old school programming. So you can do your line numbers and then when you run it, it reports back line 30. But wait a second, it didn't, it wasn't line 30. It reports back the last line number that was executed. So none of these have line numbers, so it can't report back any line numbers for those. So the last one it has access to would be line 30. So at least you know that these two lines work properly. But in reality, okay, who's going to code like this? We're not. So you're going to want to take some type of add-in typically to insert your line numbers. There are a couple of them out there. What I have here, what you see at my toolbar up here is MZ Tools. This is one that I've had for years and years and years. It is, in my opinion, an absolute must have for any serious VBA uh, developer. And we're lucky enough that it includes a button for inserting line numbers and one for removing it. So I simply make sure I'm inside a procedure. I press the button and voila, I have line numbers throughout. Now, when we run it, we're going to get line number 80. So I can come here and now I know clearly that this is the line on which the error occurred. And as a developer, that time saving at identifying the source of the problem is huge. We still have one last little thing we can do to make this perhaps even a little bit better. And that is, although I'm reporting the uh, procedure name, sometimes it can be useful to also include the module name. So it can also be useful just to demonstrate you create a private constant with the module name and then you can include it as part of your error reporting routine. And when you run it, you now know wh exactly what module, which uh, procedure caused the issue. Once again, it didn't report a line number because I don't have line numbers. I add the line number and now it will report it properly. So that is the basic implementation of it. I'll also just mention for personal knowledge, what I usually do isn't just a message box like this. I actually call a function that not only displays a message box, but also logs it to a table. That way, as an administrator, I can review errors whenever I feel like it. And then I can see all this information, what caused it, what line number, which user I can have the, uh, the operating system. I can have the, um, office version, all this different information. So then I can identify and hopefully track down and eliminate any potential issues. Lastly, uh, ERL. ERL, how do I know about it? How, where do I get information on it? Well, if you look at Microsoft's help here with the error object, if you try to do some searches with VBA, ERL, I never really managed to find anything. It's, um, I don't know why. <laughs> and if you come and you select it and press F1, I never managed to be redirected to anything proper. Give it a second. It just brings me to the error object. Uh, but as you see in the error object, which I had there, um, there is no ERL. So, uh, <laughs> you know, great, great help once again for coming from Microsoft. Um, so how do I identify this? How do I know a little bit about this? Well, let's first look in the VBE editor. First of all, if you do shift F2 to try to get the information from the object browser, you'll get the dumbest message in the world telling you that it's a hidden uh, member. Why would they display these types of errors? If someone's clicking on it, it knows it's there. Even if it's hidden, why doesn't it just unhide it? Like this is just not helpful. Why are they hiding objects in the first place in uh, members? So we'll manually unhide things. So we'll right click show hidden members. We'll close out of this and we'll try it again. Shift F2 and there it is. So it's under information. And if you open it up a little bit, you'll see it's from the VBA information and it returns a long representing the line number. You can also, you know, carefully turn towards the .NET documentation, which includes the ERL. And as you'll see here, indicating the line number of the last executed statement, which typically should be the one that caused or triggered the error. You do have to be careful, however, when you consult things on .NET or any other language, as you know, here it's saying it returns integer, as we saw in the object browser in VBA, that is not true, it returns long. But beyond that, at least you have an idea of what ERL does. It returns the line number. So I hope this helps some of you take your error handling up a notch and 
you'll see this if you aren't already doing it it really does help you as a developer track down quickly the problem so you can address it i'm going to stop here wish you all a great day and um, if you don't mind like share subscribe be greatly appreciated take care everyone